origination fees. What is an origination fee? Unfortunately, these mortgage fees are very confusing sometimes. I believe that probably mortgage companies made it that way. That way, uh, you know, it's kind of it's more difficult for people to understand what they're paying. Therefore, they get confused and they just pay it anyway. Unfortunately, that's just reality. Sales tricks are in any shape or form around the world. But anyway, nothing new about that. So I was watching one of the podcasts of David Ramsey when there was a call that came in and this lady had a question about origination fee. And I think that he did a terrible job explaining what an origination fee is. Origination fee, number one, is not the same thing as points. What do I mean with that? In this call, he explains that an origination fee is 1% of the loan value of the mortgage, of the loan that you're trying to, you know, to use to buy a home, to refinance your home, to do whatever you want to do with the home, right? Well, it's not, that's not true. Because, see, if you choose 1% of a specific value, that origination, or the origination fee is going to change based on the loan that you are financing, right? Now, by law, you cannot do that. You cannot charge $10,000 in origination fee and then $1,000 to that person and then $5,000 to that person. I mean, you could do that, I guess, if you want to get a fee uh, from the, uh, you know, Financial uh, Protection Bureau, <laughs> which mortgage companies are not going to do that. So just the assumption that origination fee is the same thing as points, that's just... That just proves to me that, I don't know, maybe Dave Ramsey was a loan origination. I know that he was a loan officer before, but maybe things were different before. Because now, every company, every branch, to be more specific of the, the, the mortgage company that you're dealing with, might have a different origination fee across the board. Meaning, all the customers that they do a mortgage for will have the same origination fee in that specific branch. For example, in the branch that I work with, our origination fee is $1,595. It doesn't change. What I mean with that is if the mortgage is for $300,000, for $100,000, for $75,000, for what? You know, $45,000 is $1,595. Uh, Does that make sense? So it's the same, the same, every single loan, you pay the same origination fee. Now, what in this call David Ramsey was referring to is a, to actual points. So what are points? Points is prepaid interest. So for example, if you are being offered a 4% interest rate, to bring that 4% down to 3.5% interest rate, you might need to pay some points. You might need to pay like three points, four points, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. That's why it's very important for you to find a good loan or um, a good loan officer because they will understand your financial situation. They will know what you're trying to accomplish. They will, uh, you know, uh, guide you and offer you a personalized offer for your specific situation that you're going through. Now, if you think that you know better, then sure. I mean, you can go shopping around to Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage, you know, through an app, and it will tell you, you know, they will throw some numbers at you, and, and and that's about it. But you know, when you're dealing with a professional, that's 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 one of the. <clears throat> how can I say this? It's one of the advantages to working with a professional that they will be looking for the best interest for your situation. Does that make sense? So you cannot combine origination fees with points. Number one, the lady that called on this specific call, which I'm going to put the link on the description section, she was already confused. $11,000 in points, that in a $150,000, $175,000 loan, that right there, if you know the mortgage industry, you would know for a fact She's not talking about origination fees. She's talking about closing costs, about points, about uh, probably even the title, escrow, insurance. I mean, about everything. You don't pay $11,000 in a $175,000 loan in just origination fee. No, that's everything. But anyway, so 
There's nothing to me more annoying that people go to look for information on the internet and just because, you know, you are pretty popular, you're pretty big, you you know, you, you wrote a book about financial literacy uh, that makes you an expert when it comes down to a mortgage industry. It just doesn't doesn't work that way. But see, that's that's how our mindset works, I guess. You know, if we sound good, if we look good, if we you know, if if we're cool, then everything we say must be true. Well, no, not necessarily. So, origination fee, one flat fee that you get charged across the board to every single person that does a loan. Points, it's normally, you know, they, they change. Like, in, like, again, to use myself as an example, in my specific branch that we work for, we calculate points by it. You know, at this time, the way that the interest rates are so low, we can afford to charge five points minus the origination fee. So the origination fee of fifteen ninety five has to be included in that five percent of those five points. A point is one percent of the loan. So if we charge five points, then you deduct the origination fee. Does that make sense? And again, origination fees is prepaid interest. That's pretty much the price that you are paying to purchase that is specific interest rate. Do you have to do it? Of course not. But you know, like I said, if you work for a professional that he knows what you are trying to accomplish, then he will be able to, 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 to offer you something tailor to you to your specific situation and by the way points change if you have an 800 credit score of course your points are going to cost you know (laughs) closing cost is going to be completely different than somebody that has a 620 credit score so your credit has a huge influence in that specific loan that you're trying to purchase does that make sense I hope it does. In that same video, which I can make another video about this, but they talk about the 15-year mortgage, the famous 15-year mortgage, because Dave Ramsey, he emphasizes that you got to be free of debt, completely free. You should owe anything to anyone anywhere in the world. You should be completely free, pay cash for everything, no credit cards, no nothing. Therefore, if you get a 15-year mortgage, you will pay off the mortgage sooner. Well, guess what happens? Right now, these days, especially the coronavirus days, people are going from 15 to 30 years. And refinancing is not cheap, as we're already talking about. Why? Just because they cannot afford payments on a 15-year mortgage. A 30-year mortgage will give you the flexibility that you need when tough times come for you to be able to be in control of that payment. So you will be able to choose, you know what, I want to make the minimum payment I want to pay extra. You would be the one who decides how much you want, how much of your money you want to give to a mortgage company. And you're like, well, you know what? Yeah, but you're going to be paying the mortgage in 30 years. Well, that's my point. If you cannot afford a 15-year mortgage and you're going to a 30, that should give you an indication that you shouldn't be in a 15-year mortgage on the first place, that it was a mistake just trying to follow some ding-dong on the internet or that wrote a book about financial literacy. Like, it just doesn't work that way. People that need to have a 30-year mortgage, there's a lot of people out there that don't have it because they have a 15 years, because they have this dream world that they must pay the debt as quick as possibly, as, as quick as possible as they can. What if that's the case? Then prove it with your actions. Don't buy the brand new Mercedes that you're driving. Don't buy those brand new AirPods that you have. Don't buy that brand new iPhone when just barely comes off. Like, you, you can't choose, you know what, I'm going to be smart this time, but I won't be as smart these 20 other times. If, if I don't know if I'm making any sense. So to give advice to everybody, look, you know, this is the way to become a millionaire. You get a 15-year mortgage. That's the only one you get. Well, you know, not everybody will become a millionaire. Not everybody should be a millionaire anyway. You know, life is more than just money on the first place. But anyway, that's, that's a different story. I'm not saying, by the way, that you shouldn't be financially free. I'm not saying, by the way, that you shouldn't, you know, invest for the future, have money and be financially free. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this 15 to a 30 year mortgage, you know. And by the way, um, you know, you're going to get a more de- better deals in a 30 year mortgage. And you're like, well, you know, I pay less points in a 15 year mortgage. I get all that. 
But you know what? Most of the mortgage companies out there will compete for your business for a 30-year mortgage. And you can shop around. For 45 days, you can get the best deal that you can possibly get. Anyway, I hope this information helps. If you have a specific question about something in specific that I mentioned, can you please put it in the comments? Please let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe, and all that jazz. And once again, thank you for watching this.